two years ago today, we witnessed the beginning of the end as history was made for Stranger Things. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today's gonna be a bit different of a video, kind of a reflection piece looking back on Stranger Things season four as this season, at least the first volume or first seven episodes dropped two years ago today. Before we take a look back and a look ahead to what's to come with season five, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below your favorite episode and favorite moment from Stranger Things season four. And of course, subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot. And if you guys want to watch Stranger Things season four with me, you can do so on my Patreon link down below. My commentary track for every episode of Stranger Things is out over there. You guys pull up the episode on Netflix and sync up and watch along with me. I had a blast doing those commentary tracks and I've got lots of other content and commentary tracks on my Patreon. Any support goes a very long way over there. So like I said up front, two years ago today on May 27th of 2022, Stranger Things season four dropped on Netflix. We got the first seven episodes, which comprised volume one on Netflix and history was made. In fact, for those of you who weren't here when I did my spoiler live stream that day or made content back in 2022 or even before then, I'm gonna give you a little story time for my day because I vividly remember the day it dropped. So funnily enough, Stranger Things season four dropped the same day as Obi-Wan Kenobi did on Disney Plus. Obi-Wan Kenobi had a two episode premiere and Disney Plus was typically dropping their episodes at midnight Pacific time, which is 3 a.m. East Coast time where I live in the East Coast. So I had set up this watch party because at the time I was just as excited, if not more excited to see the return of Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi because Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan, one of my favorite movie characters, period. He's top two Star Wars characters for me, and he was coming back for the first time since Revenge of the Sith. We had Hayden Christensen reprising the role as Darth Vader with heavy speculation if we were going to get Anakin and Obi-Wan flashbacks, as we would come to find out, that was the case. But I was beyond excited, and I was doing watch parties at the time on my channel at 3 a.m. like a madman. It would really throw off my schedule, and one of the best decisions I made was stepping away from them, but I still look back fondly at some of my watch parties. I met some longtime supporters and friends of the channel through the watch parties, so I do cherish them, but at the same time, I don't think I could do those now. Those things wrecked me the next day. I was totally exhausted. Regardless, I had set up a stream for 3 a.m. to wake up, watch the Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes, and then immediately roll into Stranger Things. Well, at the time, it was either Star Wars Celebration or some sort of Disney event, I'm leaning Star Wars Celebration, was happening. And as a special sort of thank you to the fans, they ended up dropping Obi-Wan Kenobi early. I was asleep. I went to sleep early to prepare for the long day ahead of watching Obi-Wan and then seven episodes of Stranger Things. So I go to sleep pretty early. I wake up at like 2 a.m. For some weird reason, I just wake up. Uh, my body wakes up. I roll over and look at my phone. I have a missed call from borderline everyone in my contacts list who knew that Obi-Wan Kenobi watch party was happening. And I didn't hear it for whatever reason. I think it's because where I was spending the night, I was not at my house. I was at Cam's, my girlfriend's. And so my phone was on like carpet floor and it just didn't, it, it, usually it's on like a hard night table, like wood, you guys hear that? But it was on the carpet and so the vibration just didn't pick up for whatever reason. I had alarm set, but it didn't wake me up. And so then I panic, I'm like, oh my gosh, my watch party, I gotta do that right now. I like shot up out of my bed. I was like, I gotta go. Woke up Cam and then we ended up hopping on a live stream like right then and it's still live on my channel. You guys can go watch the immediate sort of aftermath of it all and me being like, oh my gosh, we gotta go. Well, we did that, watched the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then we ended up watching Stranger Things after that. I made some breakfast by this, but by this point in time, it was really still early in the morning. A few people out there obviously were able to get ahead on the Stranger Things episodes, um, but regardless, watched Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes one and two, rolled right into Stranger Things season four, very early, running on very little sleep. Well, little did I know what I was about to witness. Obviously, I was super pumped for Stranger Things season four. I love seasons one and three at the time. Season two is the weakest to me. Still is, but I liked it. But I didn't expect season four to be, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to sort of go back and recount how I was feeling in the days leading up to it. I was still pumped for it. I had made a bunch of content like theorizing and speculating for Stranger Things. So I was very excited. I I thought it would be great, but I didn't know it was going to like change me, literally change my life. Um, season four of Stranger Things is one of the greatest seasons of TV I've seen, and 
It literally recontextualized Stranger Things as we know it. So going in to Volume 1, I had no clue I was going to witness Dear Billy, and the final moments of that were going to be an out-of-body experience. I had no clue they were going to introduce Eddie Munson and make us fall in love with him. I had no clue that we were going to get the whole Vecna, Henry Creel, 01 reveal. And it's just so special looking back and being like, man, I was so in the dark on how great Stranger Things 4 was going to be. We all were. Of course we were all excited, but no one knew that it would be as fantastic as it was. I really don't believe that. It was a three-year gap. There was some hesitation because we had the pandemic, shut down filming, it had been three years, the doubters, the skeptics were out there, and sure as hell, Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1 drops and it breaks records for Netflix. I look back to that day so fondly because I watched, like I said, the two episodes of Obi-Wan and then seven episodes of Stranger Things, and I was just reeling from a high by the time I finished it. It was so special. That's the only word I can really use to describe it. We don't get new seasons of Stranger Things often, and so being able to sit there and binge them in one sitting with my girlfriend Cam, it really just hits. And I look back fondly, like I still remember exactly where I was when certain moments happened. I remember my reaction to the end of Dear Billy, like I knew exactly where I was sitting, I stood up, I remember the end of The Dive, which is the sixth episode, I was literally on my feet cussing at the TV like, don't kill Steve, don't you do it! And so I just look back and I'm just happy that we got to experience, and the fact that two years went by like that in the blink of an eye, kind of scary, but also exciting for the future. In fact, the two years that have gone by since season four have flown by, and that's just a sign of how close we really are to season five. There was a point in time, right when season four dropped, where we were all like, well, how long are we gonna have to wait till season five? We're we gonna have to wait a decade? Like, people were just, you know, over-exaggerating, myself included. I was like, oh, we're probably not gonna get it for five years. But in reality, we had the actors and writers strike that was resolved, and now we're almost halfway through filming of the final season, like that. I remember last summer. There was like no hope. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. Where a year later, filming's going on, and a year from now, the show could be out. We could have the first volume of Stranger Things Season 5 a year from now. Really think about that. So yeah, the wait between seasons can feel endless at times. It can feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, like I said. But in reality, the time between seasons goes by so fast. And looking back to two years ago today, I've become really appreciative of time. It's very easy to want to wish things away, right? You're excited for a big movie, or a big concert, or a big football game, or whatever it may be in your life. You're excited for it, right? But once it gets there, it's there. You're in that moment, and you look back, and you're like, man, I was hoping every day for this to arrive so that I could go have fun. And you look back, and you're like, what happened to all the time? And as I sit here talking about this, I just look back at how fast the two years have gone by from summer 2022 to summer 2024. And I look forward, like summer 2025 will be here pretty fast. We only have one more season, guys. Season five is the final season of this show. So while I, of course, want to sit down and watch it right now, I would watch it tomorrow if I could. We only have one more season. This is the final time where we can sit here and theorize and speculate and be excited for a new season of Stranger Things. Yes, we have the stage play. Sorry, I just spit everywhere. Yes, we will have spin-off shows, but nothing will ever match the original Stranger Things show. We are in the middle of history right now, and sometimes it's hard for me to come to terms with that. That's applicable to not only Stranger Things, that's applicable to my sports fandom. Sidebar, I'm a Georgia fan, and they won two national titles in 2021 and 2022, and I still don't really think that I can fully appreciate that in the moment. But I can look back in 10 years and be like, man, they had a hell of a run. That's how I'm going to feel with Stranger Things. 10, 20 years from now, I'll look back and be like, wow. I lived through this entire show and got to watch every season right when it dropped, and how special is that? And so I've just kind of grown this appreciation for the show and just being patient in between seasons. There's doubters out there, there's people out there hating, oh, season five, too long of a wait, people are gonna hate it. Happened with season four and look what that did, it broke records. I predict season five will be probably the most viewed thing Netflix has ever put out, to be frank. Stranger Things is still thriving, and I'm appreciating the moment, I'm appreciating the off season because it's so much fun to talk with you guys. In fact, two years ago today, when Stranger Things season four dropped, I didn't even have 10,000 subscribers. And making content about Stranger Things, a show that I love with my whole heart, changed my life. I was able to meet so many awesome people and grow this community to what it is today and hopefully continue to grow it. Like I look back so fondly on the summer of 2022, I was making like three to four shorts a day, a lot of them talking about Stranger Things rankings and theories. I was going to the filming locations and doing vlogs. It was so much fun. We were getting 
movies like Top Gun Maverick in theaters, and we had, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi dropping, which ended up being disappointing, but in the moment it was fun. And just the summer of 2022 vibes were just immaculate. You go on TikTok, running up that hills every other audio, you've got all the Stranger Things talk, and I've honestly just grown so fond and nostalgic of that time period in my life. So at the end of the day, this video is kind of just me rambling on about how much I love the show and how it's been two years, but truly, I've learned so much over the last two years about myself, about the content creation journey, and I'm beyond excited for season five to continue to learn, continue to improve, and continue to meet new people and grow this community. While Stranger Things is a huge part of who I am and my channel, I also talk about movies and shows in general. I do movie reviews, rankings, and I always have, and I just wanted to shed a light on that as well. Like, if you guys have followed along my Stranger Things content creation journey, and you haven't really checked out my other content, like my movie reviews or rankings, I'd highly encourage you to do so, because I love not just Stranger Things, but tons of other movies and shows as well, and I make content about it pretty regularly. So if you've never checked out any of my non-Stranger Things content, or any of my non-shorts for that matter, I'd really encourage you guys to go give it a go, it would mean a lot to me. But yeah, two years ago today, we all sat down and watched the first seven episodes of Stranger Things Season 4, and we were all changed for the better. It's historic, some of my favorite episodes of television dropped from the Massacre at Hawkins lab to Dear Billy. Think Think about it this way. The time between season four to today is less than the time from now until season five likely. We got this guys. Season five is a lot closer than we think and I've just learned to really cherish the time between seasons because hey, after season five, we're not gonna have another build up to a new season of Stranger Things. This show is truly special and our patience will pay off. I firmly believe that when we get to finally watch season five. Two years went by in the blink of an eye and to quote Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while you could miss it. But that does it for me, kind of randomly ranting and rambling about Stranger Things Season 4. I'd love for you guys to share your thoughts on the season in the comments down below. But more importantly, you guys should come watch Stranger Things Season 4 with me. You can do so on my Patreon. In fact, my commentary track for The Hellfire Club, the first episode of Season 4, is free to watch on my Patreon right now. So go check that out. And if you enjoy, you can sign up at the Patreon for $5 a month and get access to all my other Stranger Things commentary tracks. Currently working through Cobra Kai Rewatch. Got movie tracks. Got lots of content coming soon. I'm doing a live stream this week. Week, my first Patreon exclusive live stream. So lots of fun, exciting content and potential new content coming very soon over there with reaction videos making a return. Who's to say? But thank you guys as always for watching. Your support truly does mean the world. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side of the Upside Down.